Instead of flour, I'm using porridge oats, not instant, that I've blitzed up in a processor with about two pinches of salt. It's not a fine flour, it's a bit mealy, but it's a flour nonetheless. It's 100 grams there. And on top of these, a teaspoon of baking powder and a teaspoon and a half of ground cinnamon. And the ground cinnamon really makes the oats taste so toasty and warm. A little stir. And then get on with the rest of the ingredients, which are pretty simple. This is 100 mils of milk. Now, actually, I'm using oat milk. It seems to enhance the oats themselves. Just one egg. And a teaspoon of vanilla paste or extract. But I rather like this dark, heavily scented gloop. little whisking, nothing too strenuous, with a bit of spilling. As with all pancakes, it's what you eat with them that really makes for the magic. And with these oat pancakes, I make a gloriously rubied honey and raspberry sauce. There's 150 grams of raspberries, and I want 150 grams of honey. Beautiful, that amber ooze. Frankly, by the time the raspberries have thawed, the sauce is made. I have to say that what with the oats, and the raspberries and the honey, these pancakes have a distinctly Scottish feel. And I can't help feeling that a wee nip of whiskey somewhere along in the mix would be a good thing. That makes me very happy. Now, a little oil on the griddle. And I know it looks like I'm just wiping it off, but I am actually leaving the faintest smear. I'm ready to roll. To dollop the batter on, and like a quarter cup measure, not fill to the brim. You can tell when it's time to flip pancakes over because little bubbles appear on the surface. So can you see there are little bubbles now and the edges are a teeny bit darker. Lovely. I have to say, I couldn't have got away with these when my children were little, but these days I cater to a slightly more mature crowd. I've got enough mixture left for another batch, but for now, I'm pleasing myself. How could a day not be good that begins with this?